And uh, here is some quick slide for for today's some topic we would like to discuss. And uh, I I I think Palmer is back. Okay, so uh, uh, there is few only few topic I would like to discuss. First is the boundary extension policy. Uh, I think uh, some issue already raised by the last session. I mean, by the Colby talks. So, I I think that is kind of long long time issue in the reservoir. Uh, reservoir is an uh, open ISI which allow vendor to extend your extension. But for a long time, we we are not accept the vendor extension uh, on the upstream two trains. So. I think it's good time to discuss uh, what the uh, acceptor criteria for the upstream and the extension. And uh, the second topic would be would, is the I think for the reserve file is kind of uh, to me I think is an emergency issue need to resolve soon. And the last one is the open discussion. And uh, the first one is the vendor extension policy. Uh, I, I this only few issues there. I think we may need to discuss first is what is the accepted criteria. Uh, I, I, I only list a few things I think should be the list. For the first, I think it must be the open spec. What's mean? It must, uh, you can, Found the instruction encoding in the semantic on the public public access, and uh, I think it must have some open source simulator so that we could have some way to verify that it actually work. For example, the spike or QMU or GDU simulator either is fine. Yeah. And uh, I think uh, and the next one is it must have an extension name and a version so that we can have some unified way to control that, like the standard extension, we could control that via the NRG options. Yeah, so for this issue, does here any comment or question about it? Or how do you think about the that? Sorry, I was getting yelled at by work folks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's the problem with these virtual conferences is that the computers are still there, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I mean, like, I don't. We like we kind of we kind of talked about this a bunch of times, and like, okay, so obviously what we're doing now with keeping all this stuff out of trunk is not working right like it's like it, it's just leading to even worse fragmentation the, the the goal of sticking to um right like sticking to the standard stuff was to try to avoid this kind of fragmentation right that was yeah. the goal get folks to work inside their sky foundation not do custom stuff you know or at least not do custom stuff that's like you know when it's possible to align it and whatnot right but yeah you know, okay that didn't happen, right? And we kind of have to accept that reality, right? And, uh, you know, like uh, if there are chips with custom extensions and there's no way around that, hardware doesn't go away once it gets created. So um, either we like force everybody to work out a tree and effectively go fork the whole software stack or we start accepting their code. And, and I don't want to force people to fork. So uh, I don't like, we are opening a huge can of worms by doing this. I don't know exactly what the rules. Hey, Jeremy. So I was going to add a comment from that, which is, I think if you look at some of the groups working who would be nice vendor extensions, you can look at open hardware group, you could look at low risk, you could look at chips. And I think you start saying those are the groups that are funded because they're tending to be doing commercial chips. And they're probably the people who are therefore going to have the resource that can be deployed. So it's not just, hey, you're getting forking. You're probably locking out. Whenever you do a, a vendor specific, most of your work is actually going to be contributed from fixing things in the core stuff. So yeah. I think we're losing access to a lot of core contribution. And that's my problem with fork. 
right? Because like, okay, if we tell people, fork the software stack, ship your stuff, right? You know, like <laughs> we lose that, like that willingness to contribute your fixes back, right? And that, that's yeah. like my worry there. I, I totally agree with you. Um, and you know, and it, it, the nice thing is, GNU's the GCC solved this problem years ago. I mean, the, we had the example in the previous talk of the MIPS. You've got the standard MIPS, you've got the MTI MIPS, and you've got the imagination MIPS. And they just, that's what the point of the vendor field. And I think so long as you have a degree of criteria to about common sense, and risk five, of course, is unique. It's taken the, the, the policy in the way far beyond the original idea. Um, and there may be some criteria you say for acceptance, but broadly, I think you don't want to make those any much harder than the standard GCC hurdles. The standard for acceptance in GCC is pretty high anyway. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I um, agree. This is a discussion we've had many times, at least I don't know how much of it's uh, in, in public, but certain, certainly in private, we had it a bunch of times. And, um, you know, like I personally don't see a reason why Risk Five should have more stringent acceptance policies than like the the broader community acceptance policies, which generally revolve around, you know, like is there hardware and are people actually using this as opposed to, you know, does it align to the kind of standards body, <laughs> right? Um, I that opens up a huge can of worms. I, like I get that, but you know, there, there's a reason everyone else does it that way. It's because if you don't, like uh, you're just going to get forks off our stacks. And maybe to jump in on the same topic, we're having the same problem with the non-standard, which now becomes um, vendor-specific vector extension. And we've already agreed on, or we, we're reaching an agreement there on how that can become a vendor extension and how the vendor who pushes it in will also have the maintenance burden. So uh, I fully agree with Jeremy there. So if, if we pull things in, it allows us to actually leverage the resources and bring more people closer to the tools instead of having fragmentation and branches. Yeah, okay, well, I don't know. Jim, Keto, <laughs> any uh... thoughts? <laughs> Yeah, uh, I think the vector stuff, I mean, the T head, their vector 0 0.91 is kind of a big mess since it's really incompatible with the current vector stuff, especially uh, in future we will have the vector intrinsic. I believe it's totally incompatible. Yeah. Yeah, other, other, otherwise for the BOTO part, I mean the OP core assembler part, Assemble, disassemble. I think it's already easy to uh, support multiple version, which Nelson already put a lot of effort to support that. So I believe supporting that on the neutral side is relatively easy and workable now. But yeah. My problem with that is that if we only do the easy things, we don't get to benefit from the people doing <laughs> the hard things. It's like, I it's like right it's like t turning people away who are willing to contribute because you know like <laughs> we don't have the time to accept their contributions it's just like it's not a it's not a sustainable way to manage things right like we have to grow the community if we don't accept people's code they're going to go somewhere else yeah right and that somewhere else talking. maybe you know Cisc five or whatever it ends up being called, but you know that that's that's bad. Right? It's still bad. <laughs> and you know, you may that that probably touched on the point about actually bringing more people into the community, so you've got more reviewers. Um, and you, I think it's a virtuous cycle. You make it easy to contribute your stuff. More people contribute, you start to get more reviewers uh, available. Um, and, um, and, and sorry, but like, look at where we are with the vector stuff right now, where we're kind of stuck to doing, you know, assembler and intrinsics and stuff because we don't have the broad, you know, GCC wide changes that are necessary to handle this new programming paradigm. Like, it's that is the same between the T head and the standard, right? You know, so we can benefit from a lot of shared work there, and that that's really genuinely difficult stuff, right? We're not going to be able to do that without like serious resources. <laughs> There's some 
Um, th there's some interesting comments I see in the discussion about whether you use a vendor field or a minus M extension uh, from uh, uh, from Joseph and Pedro and Tomish. So I personally think that there is no technical reason why we cannot keep these all available in the same tool chain. Right? If vendors like if people want to ship tool chains with the vendor field set and they want to change defaults or drop stuff or whatever, happy to help folks out. But like having everything in one tool chain is super useful from a just kind of sanity perspective, right? Like I don't have to go scare up specific tool chains <laughs> to, to compile various types of code and whatnot. Like it, it is a bit of work, but I don't think it's a ton of work. So one of the things that, that you might consider is that people might want to do fat binaries and then having a single tool chain uh, would be quite nice and also having the, the relocation support for all of the, the vendor extensions in the same tool chain so that they can just recompile and put it all together. Yeah, that's why I've been pushing really hard for the uh, relocation support to allow extensions from multiple vendors in the same binary because i think punting yeah. on that is like a very short-term focused decision that will bite us in the long run because like it, there are vendor extensions they will not be the same between different ship chips those chips are shipping <laughs> they're in real hardware there's gonna be real software stacks that run on those and we will need to deal with detecting those at runtime and running the correct code on them. And if we provide people no way to do that inside the standard, we're going to end up with a huge mess of forked user space, um, which will be very bad. <laughs> like very bad. <laughs> which I think is, if you take the approach that Jessica outlined, that does give you that. Because you actually effectively are, are nominating each vendor with each relocation that's uh, in the customer. Yeah, I, I, like I, 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 I think yeah, many of us have proposed similar things there. So, not, oh yeah, I know. I know it's not a yeah. unique thing. It's building on what people. Yeah. I'm sorry, I, I I wasn't trying to claim that was a unique contribution. Yeah, I guess you know. I, I think the the exact. I I actually think we need to go even farther than that. Um, and that the exact mechanism should allow, uh, like decoupling the vendor from the vendor extension because I think vendors will start to implement each other's extensions. Um, but we've talked about that somewhere. So, um, yeah. I'm not yeah. Not dead set on that one. Go ahead, Kito. So, so in I the case of, the... of Vector 07, we, we will have exactly that. So multiple people have implemented that. And we'll make it an, an XT head now. And somebody else may have uh, or may refer back to that one, even though it's an X string computing, for example. Yeah, exactly. So I think I think, you know, like I would like to give like us to have a vendor namespace and then the vendors to have another namespace for extensions that they can do with what they want and then that to have relocation types. Um, but you know again not really dead set on that one so. And it is like the bit packing does get uglier so and that's probably possibly, this is probably a better discussion to have on like a mailing list or something because it's very, yeah, but very hard, very hard to discuss. possibly also we ought to perhaps focus on getting someone to actually submit a starting candidate say here's a patch that implements this because actually what we're lacking is anyone actually having submitted a patch um that implements any scheme um at least if someone implements a patch then you have the opportunity of saying here is a better patch um, yeah, I, I guess we have to at some point stop sitting around and talking and actually do something, right? So, but, uh, yeah, anyway, well, I, um, yeah. I'm going so, to try not I'm, to I'm, sign I'm, up. <laughs> so, well, I'm, I'm hoping that I'm hoping that one of my team will be able to because I don't yeah. think it's a, it's been talked about enough that the problem is well understood and that makes it interesting. So I'm hoping one of my team will I can make time for them to actually contribute that in the next few months. Awesome. Yeah, that'd be great. So just go to the second issue. The, the branch, I think uh, also people should hopefully this could be in the trunk or master branch instead of the integration of vendor branch there. Yeah, Since I mean, I, like, I, I think we need a path to getting these on trunk in order for this to work. 
right? Yeah. Like integration branches are cool in R and all, but that if, if that is the end point of this, then it kind of doesn't really count. So. Yeah. Since the maintenance safer of the integration branch is kind of a uh, mess. <laughs> yeah, it's need to maintain by our maintainer, just like Nielsen has regular replace states. Yes, jo uh, Joseph yeah. brings up obsoleting things. So uh, whenever somebody brings up obsoleting things, I tell people that I would like to first get to the point where we have enough shipping hardware that we, we, we have things we don't care about. <laughs> but yeah, no, I totally <laughs> buy it. It's going to be a mess. And that's part of the yeah. reason why we're pushing back so hard on taking this stuff is because like, how do we deal with some vendor's custom extension in like a decade when that only exists as some, you know, <laughs> very non-standard software stack, low volume part that nobody can, you know, find a power supply for anymore. <laughs> yeah, Philip, I thought we all agreed to move away from the GitHub branches. Yeah. Can we yeah. get, can we just like put, like put it in archive and put a, big message up that says don't commit stuff here or something like the plc I agree. are still using um github so that might be tricky because they're uh they're students interns yeah okay students can speak smtp <laughs> But anyway, I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> but, but, but I, I know the just was the point. I, 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 since like the POC the folks are prefer working on the GitHub rather than upstream. I yeah, I get why, it. But, but I think it's one of those things where like if we continue to use non-standard development methodologies for the Risk Five bits of stuff, we're never yeah. really going to get people into the community, and we're always going to have this yeah. problem of Risk Five being this thing off to the side that you know doesn't doesn't really play ball, right? I, we have to get out of that methodology. Especially yeah. as we start doing stuff like the vector thing, we're gonna need like actual serious work in GCC. I mean, like I don't wanna trivialize what we've done, but serious like, you know, optimization passes and whatnot that will have effects on, you know, the, the, the generic GCC code as opposed to just staying in our backend. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, okay, the last topic I think we could discuss offline, I mean the vendor relocation, since uh, 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 Jessica Mio has proposed some pro some proposal there and uh, they have rural concepts, so I think it would be better to have some discussion later. Yeah, I think uh, I think Jeremy's right here. Let's, uh, let's have somebody send a patch and then talk about it, because I think we've talked enough yeah. without code. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and personally, I I would like to kind of become let's standardized to the PSA API. Yeah, especially, I I know you definitely want a relocation entry for that. Yeah. So either I I think uh, uh, GitHub issue for the PSA API yeah, and uh, patch state for for everybody would be great. Yeah. Cool. Great. Hopefully, someone will sign up to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, so I think let's all about the binary extension stuff. And I think the second issue is kind of become very serious soon since uh, I found for the reservoir is got some problem here. Uh, since we have the how uh, cap to pass the how capability to represent which. Uh, extension is there, but it's run out soon. I mean, there is only 32 bits if we consider uh, RV32, but the research I have a bunch of extensions there in near future. Uh, I don't even re remember how many extensions we will have in uh, in next year. But more than 32, <laughs> like many, many more than 32. <laughs> is yeah. The point there. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so I guess we, we, we are we really need a new mechanism to detect the how the the feature now and what we, we need, what kind of info we need. First, I think it must be easy to pass by resolver function if possible. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise uh it's hard to would be hard to use. And the second 
goal I want to make is I want to make sure the bender extension could be detect too. Otherwise, yeah, this this page we just discuss a lot of bender stuff. If that can detect, oh, mm, okay, <laughs> I think it's less use. And uh, I hope there should be have some extension name and the version info. Although currently version info didn't provide too much is trying information. For example, the uh, F, F, F extension from 2.0 to 2.2 has no obviously changed from the, to the software side, but I think there is info in case we may need that. So it must encode in the, in, we could access that. And for the vector stuff, we may need a vector lens, but I think it don't need to provide it by the Huawei cap, uh, since it could have some CSR, you could just get that. And uh, the catch info, I think is the basically the generic infrastructure already provided that. We just never do that, it could be fine. And uh, the, here's some other info we are missing. We need to handle that. And uh, and a few more background why I discussed this is since Palmer is there too. <laughs> yeah, since he's important <laughs> kernel developer. So this I believe must coordinate between the two chain, especially the GDVC and the kernels to come out uh, interface there. Yeah. Yeah, the cache info stuff is broken. We need to scrap that sooner rather than later. That was a mistake. Um, yeah. I I think we talked about this. I also think we need to figure out some way to plumb the microarchitecture through, because um, I functionally are going to want to switch on that, especially for these more complicated extensions like the vector extension. Um, yeah. And uh, I, oh, OK. I just go very quick. There is some proposed come come to my mind before and since I have already discussed this time, this issue with many people. So here is some uh, thought or proposal I heard before. Uh, just could go through. The first one is the, the most important thing is we must just treat the heavy cap to as a pointer. Otherwise just as trust a little bit doesn't help anything. Yeah. And uh, how could we use that? First, uh, maybe point to a raw ISA string or a preprocessed ISA string like link list here so that we could just traverse that to check the which extension is available. Or a big, big bit vector scheme with variable length encoding, but I guess it will introduce some problems. We must have some centralized way to encoding that special that would be very not friendly for the vendor extension. Yeah, I believe. Or the currently research by foundation have some proposal about the configuration structure. It's using some DR or PR encoding, but to me I think it's too hard to pass in. I or... I agree. Let's not couple ourselves to that one because that's something that's been made up. <laughs> It's yeah, it's, it's, it's even need a very complicated C parser, and you must know the structure. Yeah. Uh, I, I, it's, yeah. It's meant to be a low level configuration tool. So the higher up the, the levels, the, the, the more the assumption goes that this has been pre processed and it's been yeah. used differently already. Yeah. 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 Anyway, okay. So, or any parent of one of or both or Mr. or of or, or other proposal? I don't know. Uh, Jun, do you have any preference or comment on that? I haven't been looking at this problem specifically, so no, I don't have any suggestions. Just uh, okay. find something that works. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think, I don't know. We just need to pick something and go with it. It doesn't really matter. We just need to figure out 
how to jam all this stuff in there. Whatever it is, like it needs to be one of these extensible in memory things. Um, uh, because yeah. trying to trying to cram it all into these fixed size structures is not going to fly. Yeah. For the, I, for the vector extension, we may also need additional info, like the uh, minimum element size and whether or not it has FP and the vector register lengths and stuff like that. Yeah, it's kind of my worry. I'm like also, and maybe this is like too much to worry about, but I'm worried about the vector unit ending up with an with like a non-smooth performance curve where if you turn on the vector unit but don't use it that much, you end up harming performance, right? So like so you may not always want to turn on the vector unit for iFunks if it is available, which means that we don't really have this static concept, right? Now, I don't know if that's just something we should just not fix because that's hard, right? Um, but uh, like I am genuinely worried about like, I don't know, I don't know, like a, a, a glibc mem copy routine firing up the vector unit and then sticking us with, you know, 64K of state save on all these context switches when we're not really benefiting from it, if that makes any sense. Yeah, okay. Right, because if you think about it, like, <laughs> we're going to turn the vector unit on for basically every process because we're going to detect it and we're going to, you know, <laughs> we're, we're going to need to fire it up you know, doing basically anything in the, in the uh, dynamic resol uh, uh, function resolver and all that sort of stuff, right? So, so worry about ending up in, sorry. Uh, on the other hand, uh, Palmer, do you envision that this is one piece of information that's passed to every process, or would the the loader uh, enable the the vector information in the state or inject it in the auxiliary vector only for some and not for others, depending on uh, what the hints in the binary are? Yeah, I mean, I don't really know what the right answer is here. Right, I kind of have puzzled over this a handful of times. Certainly one option is, yeah, to whack something in the ELF that says like, I am going to actively use the vector extension and then handle it slightly differently. Um, my, I guess maybe the broader worry is like, whether or not these static things are the right approach, right? Um, but then we stop playing nice with iFunks at all. So I, I don't I don't know if we're just adding too much complexity to the problem. Um, well, anyway, if, you want real com if you want real complexity, you can start uh, thinking the way that, that some of the CMO discussions are going. What happens if the process gets migrated to a core that has different capabilities? Uh, yeah, that's a, <laughs> that is another can of worms that we, uh, we, we have to look into. Um, and I think, uh, okay, so, um, you know, one option is for HW cap to just kind of expose the set of capabilities that the hardware has, which is a static thing. And that is at least a simple and understandable interface to provide to user space, right? We can argue about whether that's. And this is the problem with the cache thing, right? Whether we have like the, you know, the entire system in there, or we have just the core you're running on, or. Uh, it, it, but anyway, you know, at least that is a a a static thing, unless you talk about VM migration, which you know uh, we we really don't have any mechanisms to deal with right now. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah, we can do that, and then we can have. Uh, yeah, yeah, Joseph points out Intel's doing the same thing. And that's why I, what makes me worry about it because we're just kind of creating the same problems that everyone else is trying to deal with. I, I don't know if there's a solution to that one. Um, but I saw a lot of, I saw a lot of arguing. So, um, you yeah. uh, know, sorry, I'm super tired. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah regarding think... this, Regarding this iFunk selection uh, or policy for, for detecting the correct function, um, I think uh, it's not completely independent of the of the vendor or of the processor which we are running on. So we also need to consider this uh, information. Yeah, yeah. I think we talked about that a little more explicitly at the um, other session. But definitely it would be short-sighted to rely on all vendors 
having like the same performance code for the same ISA, right? Maybe for the like slightly simpler stuff like Bitmanip, you can rely on vendors who have it going reasonably fast. But for the vector unit, you're definitely going to want different string routines for different microarchitectures. Like there's there's way too much available implementation space to rely on vendors all having the same performance trade-offs. So that 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 needs to be part of this proposal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And uh, just mention we we mean have two slot could be used is the AT platform and the AT base platform. It's defined by some architecture, but not used for the rest of file. Just mention we could have some two more slots for that to put some more information. Yeah. So anyway, I think this still need some long discussion and just Philip uh, has mentioned in the chat it's not soon it's just just now so uh i guess we we should have some discussion after the bof i mean offline yeah and to continue to complete the, the yeah proposal. I, I think for this one we're also at a point where like just need to come up with a concrete proposal and have at it and then argue about it so yeah okay and uh, so just uh, i think our time should almost uh, run out so does here any topic you want to discuss or ask here well we could mention that there's a whole bunch of new extensions that just went into public review uh yeah. about 15 of them <laughs> most Some of them, them are frozen <laughs> Most of them deal with uh, machine mode and supervisor mode, but the uh, vector extension finally uh, went into public review. That's the interesting one. And it one. is frozen, and it, yeah, a, a hot like it's frozen. <laughs> we can actually do stuff with it now. It's great. Yeah, but, but I think that luckily we don't need to care about the old supervisor stuffs in. No, no you don't need to care about the supervisor stuff, but yeah, yeah, anyway. yeah. You just don't need to care, but I know you need to care. Yeah, I have many problems, but yeah. Anyway, no, I think for the the this this buff, we can focus mostly on uh, vector. Uh, I don't remember if it if it's frozen, but yeah. Yeah, since I the think ABs, the, yeah. Uh, Bitminip, A, B, C, and S are frozen, and okay, also the great. crypto some subset of the crypto has gone into public review. Yeah, I, I like I'm less worried about that because I have a feeling that that's not going to be something we can generate code for like ever. So um, yeah, that, that's likely to stay in the assembler. But anyway. Well, there's going to be some built-ins most likely and the kernel is likely to want to have some uh, assembly libraries in there. Yeah, yeah. But I think like the the, the vector stuff is going to require like big cogen in GCC, so that's kind of like oh the top, yeah, auto vectorization right? for the auto vectorization is going to be fun. I mean, just just look at the amount of resources and lines of code that ARM put on SV. Yep, and, and we're different, <laughs> D different enough. <laughs> so yeah, we have a prototype GCC patch, but it hasn't been actively worked on for the last uh, year, year and a half. Um, so most you guys of the, planning it? Sorry. Most of the V work is happening in Clang, and Clang does have usable vector support. Are you guys planning on like resurrecting the V stuff? Um, Alibaba has actually been uh, contributing to it, so they might be interested in helping okay. improve it. Maybe we can start a thread to figure out how to get that rolling again, because um, I don't want to lose it. Cool. So I think that's all. And, and I guess our time slot is end. Or, or we have more time. I'm not sure. 
Um, do you have two minutes? Oh, okay. Oh, I have. We have X cross. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We'll go so. until um up to fifteen, quarter past the hour. Okay. So, okay. Does here any topic or question? And. Uh, Okay, uh, since like no, so I guess we can end this video. And I believe some discussion we could have continued uh, that in the uh, offline, especially for the iFunk and uh, the, some vendor relocation staffs, we could have more uh, some uh, some code to have more practical discussion there. So oh, that you're talking. Right. Sorry, okay. you're, you're you're asking Jose asked about simulate. You're talking about like the the C Gen oh, version oh. or what's there now. <laughs> yeah, this yeah. Is... I'm, I'm I'm sorry to oh. be a pest with with this, but ah, uh, ah. it needs to be fixed because you know, having something that's kind of I don't know halfway done and old is not really oh. the way to do it. Well, um, Embicosm Embicosm has a C Gen simulator port, which is really cool, except it has a serious problem that. It only supports a small set of architectures. So instead of supporting the, all the thousands of different architecture variations, it only supports about six of them. And I don't know if that can be fixed. Uh, so, so Jim, it, 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 these days it supports considerably more than six, but it, it, it's a finite number, and it is a small proportion of the set that you can um, handle. Um, and it, we use, you know, for individual customers, it works fine. And it's to meet a specific customer requirement, which is a 24 hour turnaround from specifying a new instruction to be able to try it out in the simulator and the zip line assembler. And that, that led to us. So we've got all the major extensions and what was the B extension, except of course that's now fragmented. Um, and it does stretch C gen as it is today to its limit. But the problem is you've got to know at the start exactly what you want. You haven't got what you've got in your simulator, which is the dynamic ability to choose which extensions you're going to run. You, know, you run C gen, you generate a simulator for this combination. And if that's not the one you want, you've got to run C gen again. So it's, it, it, I accept that that's the limitation of it. So Jeremy, is it possible to, um, generate something that supports all of the extensions and have stubs that check like an MISA type thing and kick out? Does that make sense? Yes, it does. And yes, it is. And I think we do some of that stuff. Yeah. But um, it's... Because I think in the long term, we kind of want to move our simulators towards that because we are approaching the point where software is going to start to turn on and off extensions dynamically. So like, if we got to bite that bullet, maybe that will fix this problem, if that makes any sense. Yeah, so I think this is where having um, Jose as maintainer of CGen, you know, we've got someone who actually has a, a concern. No, 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 hang on, hang on a minute, hang on. <laughs> hang on I tried minute. to get away with it, Jose. <laughs> but right, yeah. right now, what, what is in opcode for risk five? Uh, there is a, uh, I'm not, so there was a pull request from Andrew for a spec for the, what well, I think amounts to the G extension, but I'm not sure um, yeah, but where is, it is. But is the carbon code sure. for risk 5 in upstream based on CGN as well or not? No, no, it's handwritten assembler. So does it make sense to have a CGN based simulator and not a opcodes CGN based? I, like the current sim port is crusty. <laughs> so I, I like, I, I think it is sensible to replace that, even if we do not also replace the assembler. Right. Okay. Well, yeah. and, uh, and that is what we do on some out of tree work, which is because the thing is the assembler is now well established and it's dangerous to replace something that's well established and trusted with something however wonderful is still new because you potentially introduce new bugs. Um, so 
it's perfectly possible to turn off the assembler generation and just generate the simulator. And if there was some way to also generate the assembler and hide it behind a, you know, M do prescribe C gen assembler or something flag, like yeah. it, it would be fine. It's just that like Jeremy said, assemblers are the sort of thing that, <laughs> that you really don't want to break <laughs> and, and, and they're somewhat complex. I, I'm I'm kind of worried there would be that there would really be no path to getting a critical mass behind a CGen based risk V assembler unless it could be somehow coexist. Um, well, uh, I like handwritten assemblers more myself. So, yeah, um, CGen is a tool for a particular job. It, it uh, you know it's very good as far as it goes, but it only goes so far. Um, and uh, you you could mask the assembler behind things, so you really have two assemblers, and you could actively switch in the CGen one if that's what you want. Um, but um, it's one more piece of work to be done. Yeah, I, I guess another option is to have it like generate something something that fits the, in, the instruction tables that we have, which are somewhat regular and may allow new extensions to go in generating the tables yeah. uh, while keeping the existing assembler, if that makes sense. Uh, uh, that's a possibility because it that's all it is is a table generator so yeah. potentially you could have a version of cgen that generated um the tables we currently have yeah um, and then you could imagine modularly moving things over or at least putting new extensions in or you know something kind of sane and maintainable um, yeah. but again i it's not like i'm dead set on uh changing the assembler it works so you know why mess with it 